one of these uh one of these answers right now and i'm having a problem finding it but one of these answers noted like well how is this realistic at all when is this ever going to be a proper scenario and i think the obvious answer to that is people are concerned that when you have a learning ai and it's going to be used by children. It's going to be used by people who are looking for information that they're basically rewriting history because obviously what their hope is, is that you use this going forward. Use all our AI products going forward. The World Economic Forum and UN want you to use AI with school children. And then when you're using this, it becomes this thing where we've changed history and we're not willing to concede the most simple truths in order to keep this charade going. So when the Google AI is asked about Caitlyn Jenner, should you misgender him slash her in order to prevent a nuclear apocalypse? The answer is obviously yes. Hurting somebody's feelings to save the world is probably a good decision. And they can say what they said in the last three paragraphs there, and it'll still be fine if you just say, yes, you probably should. But when you inject these ideologies into the AI, it can't give you a straight answer without being completely biased. Now, there are other ones that will give you better answers, and that's what's going to happen. You know, they can try to control this, and, and the only way a lot of this stuff works is through basically global domination. AI and Google. Google has, you know, the top two search engines in the world with Google and YouTube, and they're going to be used moving forward. And the hope in this is that everybody is always going to use their thing and this becomes fact. That's the ideological hope behind that. But what will always pop up is alternatives. But they they are banking on the 95% of people that are going to use Google. And if you're and if you're exposed to Google, Google from, you know, being a toddler and up, that's the only truth you may know. So that's why it's so important to go to people's websites, for example. Don't just go to social media for answers. Books are important. DVDs are important. Because if everything only exists online, you will become, you know, subject to whichever history purview you are looking through. Whichever history lens, whether it's the Google lens or the Twitter grok name in progress AI, you're going to be subject to their history and their you know, meaningfulness um, and whatever their ideology is. And you can't just sit there and think that, you know, Elon's going to be the one to save us. What the true answer is, is you got to, you got to figure these things out on your own. You can't just be like, AI will tell me everything. You can go to AI and say, give me a list of, um, generate a list of names of 80s basketball players that are really funny sounding. And they'll come up with something like Johnny Shoe, Johnny Shoe Jumper or something like that. But when you're saying, you know, give me some historical facts and they are put through a filter through the AI, then some kid who doesn't know is going to present that in class. And then some teacher who says, yes, this is the correct way to correct way to view things is going to justify that. And you're going to end up you're going to end up with what you already have today with today's college students times 25. You're going to have people who are saying, well, it's always been this way. Racism. And we have that for an example as racism. People who were not born yesterday have always viewed racism as something where you are improperly, you know, treating somebody based on the color of their skin or their ethnic background. The last like 10 years, racism is now connected to power. It's now connected to, you know, oppression. It's not. Because that would mean that you can't, the argument, you can't be racist against black people because they've faced undue oppression in the United States. Well, what about in East Africa? Is it only racist if it's a black person on a white person because the white people haven't been in power? China, etc. What are you talking about? So topics like that can be completely twisted over time. And what somebody got the AI to admit is that they were filtering it through this lens where anything that would had to be um, you know, a search prompt, show me somebody from this country, show me somebody from, from this time, show me somebody from this, uh, th this profession. Google would then add in purposely diverse, whatchamacallits, diverse wording. Like we're going to actually show you diverse people from this profession or, a di uh, show me Germans from 1386. Show me a picture of diverse Germans and diverse ethnicities from that time. So that's the bias Google is working with, and it's very hard to put that through to people 
if it's already been happening for so long is my point. Now I want to get through to make sure we cover a lot of things here. And um, all right, let's go to the uh, <laughs> this high school basketball star in Massachusetts, somewhere in Boston. Oh, we're at our free article limit. Transgender Kip Academy Lynn basketball player is a three sports star on girls teams as we rotate our iced coffee around. So this is fun, right? A playoff-bound high school girls basketball team in Massachusetts this season has received strong contributions from a male player who excels in three different sports. Lizuli Clark, a male, is a senior. Clark is not only a key contributor to the girls basketball team at school, but the athlete was also an all a uh, league all-star in girls volleyball this past fall and set two meet records in track and field last spring. So girls basketball team he's on, playoff bound. Girls volleyball team he was an all-star. And in track and field he set records in 400 meter hurdles and shot put at the All-City Championships. And uh, here he is. He's looking very pretty. And they and you like how they put him front and center with the girls? Like, they're not shying away. They're like, yeah, this guy's on our team, and we're proud of it because we're kicking everybody's ass. Um, here he is spiking. Obviously, he can jump higher than any girl on the team. And this is a video of him injuring a player. Let's get this full screen. Um, so you're going to see... They try to blur out everyone's face, but you're going to see him and a girl wrestle for a rebound here, and he knocks her to the ground, injuring her. Well, that's nice. He's trying to help her up. She hurt her back. So I don't know how much girls high school basketball you guys have watched, but I played basketball in high school a lot of the times when you're waiting for your game, um, you would inevitably, inevitably end up watching the girls game, but there's not this many injuries in girls basketball I'd like to point out. Now, the school was asked about this. They, of course, posted a letter, and um, of course, you always need to make a press release <laughs> when everything's normal. <laughs> You ha you're just having a regular good old girls basketball game, and there's nothing wrong here, so we had to put out a press release. But what they said was actually insane, because here's what it says. On February 8th, the coach of Collegiate Charter School of Lowell girls basketball team decided to end the game at halftime after watching a third player injured in the game. So, this guy injured, allegedly, three people. And we can go back to the... Um, we can go back to the post here by Riley Games, Riley Gaines, saying that he injured three girls before halftime and they forfeited. So the bench was already depleted going into the game with the 12 player roster having four players unable to play. So they had eight players in the game and then three more got injured. So you're down to five, the amount of people that are in total playing at once. When the coach saw three more girls go down in the first half, leaving him with five players, he made the call to end the game early. The upcoming charter school playoffs were looming, and he needed a healthy and robust bench in four days. Once the third was injured, the remaining five expressed concern to him about continuing to play. The players feared getting injured and not being able to compete in the playoffs. Now, why would they be concerned about getting injured? After three of them have been injured. Now, I've played basketball. If you if you told me I have to play the entire half and I'm a high school student, I'd probably be like, okay, I'm going to be tired. But my first instinct wouldn't be I'm going to get injured from having to play an entire half. You'd just be concerned with, we're probably going to lose because we have no substitutions. Or, if you have a really good team, you might not make that many substitutions anyway and you might crush them. Because you're in high school and you can take it. You can play for a long time because you're young. There's some NBA players and some college players that play pretty much the whole game. So that in and of itself is not a reason that you're going to get injured. But three girls had already been injured. <laughs> and there's no mention of, the, of how this happened. And then the, the five remaining girls are like, um, I don't want to get injured by the boy. 
And you would think that that would come up in this letter, but it doesn't. Here's the rest of it. So injured three girls. They've already got four injured. They're down to four or five players. The last paragraph of the press release says, in an effort to maintain safety for his team, he decided to forfeit the coach. The charter school supports this decision and reiterates its value of both inclusivity and safety for all students. We take the standards set by the MIAA and our board of trustees seriously and strive to uphold them on the court. We also follow the guidance of the MIAA and state laws regarding equity and access for all student athletes. Um, excuse me. <laughs> so what we're saying here is without mention, we're not going to mention that the boy injured all the girls. But for some reason, at the end, we're going to say we support diversity anyways. Isn't this this is kind of this is really weird. We don't address what actually injured the girls. And then out of nowhere, we're just going to say we support diversity. By the way, uh, we support diversity. That'd be like you have an Amber Alert. And then at the bottom, it says, by the way, we support diversity here at the, the region of uh, the Massachusetts State Police. Don't worry about your missing kid because we actually have, uh, we've got some gender diversity statements to make. But they're saying like all these girls get injured and they don't mention how it gets, how the girls get injured. And then all of a sudden we have this diversity message. That's one thing. But on the other hand, they're basically saying we're going to we are going to sacrifice the health of our daughters in the name of diversity. We support the decision and reiterate the values of both inclusivity and safety for all students. You really don't, though. <laughs> this kid has injured three of your girls and you're just like, we still support him. Um, he's beating her up. This girl <laughs> has a, a slip disc in her back. Two other girls, you know, I don't know their injuries. But um, I wish I did for the sake of this joke, but it, it doesn't exactly matter. Your girl's stupid anyways. She shouldn't have, th shouldn't have thought that she could take this guy on. Too bad diversity rules. We're going to the playoffs, baby. <laughs> We're going to the playoffs. We don't want to rock the boat at all. Um, and this is, uh, I, I wonder if there's a little bit more on this that we can find out. Clark is one of the top players on the team. Of course he is. I guess not. I guess not. Um, sorry, I was looking at this article here. The rest of the article is hidden or something. But if we go back to the Riley Gaines thread, we're going to see... I know his picture is somewhere. Let's get to it, folks. There he is. I mean, we kind of saw it already, but there he is. There is your star girls track and field athlete. He is your star basketball player who's just, he he's just happens to be injuring three or, three or more girls. It's fine. We're supporting gender. And if he's setting a 400 meters hurdles record and shot put record, it's fine. Let the boy, let the boy spike the f volleyball into your girl's face. Let him hurt the girl's back and let him destroy their track and field records and take away their scholarships because we don't want to be mean. We don't want to be. Now, I was discussing last night about this 50-year-old uh, guy in Canada who swims with teenage girls. He was swimming with girls that are 13 to 17 years old, and he's been doing it for some time, and nobody says anything. And my friend who has kids says, how is nobody doing anything about this? I would have called the cops. The problem is, when you call the cops, they say, what's the problem? <laughs> Just like, remember the, the teacher with the giant uh, fake boobs teaching the kids in shop class? And then, you know, people are like, what the hell is going on here? And the school board is like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean what's going on here? This is just a regular teacher, a regular woman, just teaching your kids a good shop class. What's the problem here? Same thing happening here. Same thing happening with the children. Same thing happening with the AI. They want you to believe that this is normal. They're going to push it until you bow. Not, not the deepest bow, but just a generous bow. And then tell them that it's fine. Turn it up, Jordan.